Hello and welcome to Kaplan USMLE Step 2 CK Q-Blast. I'm Dr. Jason Fernasiak, and this week we're going to be reviewing a clinical vignette which is packed with high yield information for the boards and the wards. Let's take a look at the vignette. A 14 year old girl comes to the physician because of heavy menstrual bleeding that began with menarche two years ago. Her menstrual periods last 8 to 10 days and occur approximately every 28 days. Her last menstrual period ended three days ago. Vital signs are temperature 37 degrees, blood pressure 110 over 70 millimeters mercury, pulse 90 per minute, and respirations 18 per minute. Physical examination shows a slender, calm girl who is in no distress but appears pale. The remainder of the examination is unremarkable. Laboratory studies show a white blood cell count of 7,000, a hemoglobin of 9, a hematocrit of 27, and platelets of 250,000. Which of the following is the most appropriate next step in management? Is it A, begin a, transfuse, a transfusion of packed red blood cells, B, order a pelvic ultrasound to rule out polycystic ovaries, C, order a coagulation profile, D, reassure the patient that heavy bleeding is caused by anovulatory cycles, or E, start oral contraceptive therapy. The correct answer here is C, to order a coagulation profile. Let's review some of the key points to this clinical vignette. First, dysfunctional uterine bleeding is often the presenting symptoms of a patient that has a blood or coagulation disorder. Transfusion of packed red blood cells, choice A, is not correct as the patient is not unstable. She only has mild tachycardia but a stable blood pressure here. A pelvic ultrasound to rule out polycystic ovaries, which is choice B, is incorrect because a blood or bleeding disorder is most likely. Remember, polycystic ovarian syndrome is marked by irregular cycles in heavy bleeding. This patient has regular cycles. Reassurance that the heavy menstrual bleeding is likely secondary to anovulatory cycles, or choice D, is also incorrect because she began with heavy prolonged bleeding at menarche at the onset of her menses. The patient is anemic, which also demands some further diagnostic studies. The most likely diagnosis here is von Willenbrand's disease. Let's review a couple of key facts. Most common inherited disorder of bleeding, and particularly will present with heavy bleeding at the onset of menses or menarche. Gen generally is transmitted in an autosomal dominant trait. And here are the lab findings, which are key. You'll have a normal PT and a normal or slightly prolonged activated PTT. You'll have a normal platelet count. And here's where the abnormalities come in. You'll have an increased bleeding time. Von Willebrand's disease is required for normal binding of platelets to blood vessels. You'll also have a decrease in factor eight and Von Willebrand's factor. And you'll have an abnormal ristocetin activity, which is a study which characterizes von Willenbrand's factors activity. Our high yield takeaway points for this case, von Willenbrand's disease is the most common inherited bleeding disorder. It should be considered when a young girl presents with heavy bleeding since the onset of menses. Von Willenbrand's factor is, uh, links platelets to the endothelial cells and carries clotting factor eight. Thus, Laboratory testing for von Willenbrand's factor will include von, von Willenbrand's antigen, von Willenbrand's factor activity, and factor eight. All of those are indicated studies in patients that you're concerned about von Willenbrand's disease. This has been our high yield clinical vignette for this week. I hope that this case is helpful as you study for the boards and also take care of your patients on the wards. I'm Dr. Jason Fernasiak. We'll be back again real soon with another clinical vignette. Take care.